Hey guys, you know, I didn't really show it much in uh, today's uh, game, this morning's game between the uh, Indians and Athletics, but um, as I was playing through it and getting things ready, I realized that the uh, Philadelphia Athletics really don't have a whole bunch of pitchers. I think I've mentioned that before. I think it was a couple, maybe a week or two ago that I was talking about that. It got me a little bit curious to go back and to look and to see just exactly what it is that Connie Mack did as he was uh, managing the team. And so uh, we can go ahead and look at this a little bit together. Um, you'll probably have to excuse me for a second as I um, uh, get my uh, face added back in here. We have this uh, problem every once in a while where uh, it's uh, Pipewire decides to uh, do really weird stuff. Um, I don't really understand why. I'm not sure if it's because of some sort of um, update that we're getting from uh, Arch or what exactly is happening. There you go, and there I am. Um, uh, so, yeah, when we go ahead here, this is probably the easiest way to look at the lineup, so it would be nice if we had pitching rotations separate from everything else, but whatever. And what's interesting here when we look at this is the amount of rest that these guys were getting, right? So Fowler pitched, um, so we're looking, what, at April? Well, we want to look at uh, May, because this is where the real congestion's happening, right? So you're getting Coleman here, for example. Coleman pitches on the 10th, then on the 15th, again on the 20th. You see four days rest. And then 27th is the next time that uh, Joe Coleman was pitching, right? And you look at Bobby Chance. He pitches on the 11th. And then the 18th, so he had a whole week. And then uh, something must have happened to him because uh, we don't see him um, for quite some time. We don't see him until uh, July 4th. So I'm guessing that he was um, injured or something like that was going on. Um, or maybe he pitched poorly and, you know, was, uh, was uh, dismissed back to the bullpen. They used to do that back then. This guy, uh, Brissy, this is uh, Lou Brissy. Yeah, I got his first name right. Um, Lou Brissy uh, here um, started, what, on the A, on the uh, 7th, my apologies, and the 12th, so four days rest, 17th, another four, and the 22nd, another four, and the 28th, another four, right? So you're looking at, like, sort of the five-man pitching rotation is basically what we're looking at. Uh, McCahan, um, I don't know much about him. I don't know if I have really started him that much or not. I mean, he started on the 14th and on the 23rd. I think you can tell that he's starting close to where these double headers are, right? Which tells me that McCann was probably sort of like, you know, the uh, sort of double header type spot starter or kind of, you know, your starting pitcher um, who's going to eat the innings, Bull McCann. I mean, the guy only appeared in seven games, uh, started only four, you know, through the season. We just looked at three of them. Um, so, uh, I guess you an idea of what they did there. And then they have, um, Fowler, of course, uh, what is his first name? Uh, Dick Fowler. There we go. And, uh, so he starts on what the 15th and then he starts again, not until the 25th. And then he starts again on the fourth, right? So it's the same sort of idea where they're, they're just giving him tons of time from the fourth then to the ninth. So for that one, he had, again, four days rest, right? You can do this and you can play this game a long time if you want. Dick Fowler, by the way, was the opening day pitcher, interestingly enough. Um, but the interesting thing that hopefully you've been able to see from this is that actually like the um, uh, Philadelphia Athletics, at least, um, in 1949, did not use the infamous four-man starting rotation, you know. It wasn't exactly a five-man rotation. Um, what they were doing, though, is they were giving the pitchers enough rest, and enough rest at that time was definitely defined, as we just saw, by having probably four days of rest, four days, days between games. If you look back and you're wondering, man, you know, how did these guys do it? Well, you have to remember at the beginning of the season when they're trying to get warm, these guys were pitching on that same sort of uh, four days of rest model that we see so frequently today. If you look around, especially the post-World uh, War II history of baseball, this is kind of the norm you'll see. Um, you go back a little bit further, yeah, you'll see maybe a little bit of the old sort of four-man rotation. But again, you have to look close, and you have to make sure that uh, you're not being uh, completely led astray just simply by the um, order in which the names come. The problem that you have is, especially in April and May, you get a lot of games that are called off because of uh, bad weather. Um, and because games are called off, it means that um, you're not necessarily going to have a very exact pitching rotation. And sometimes guys will get a week off, even if they technically are part of the rotation. So anyways, a little bit of an interesting thing to look at, because if you're like me, you've always grown up thinking that, oh, back in the old days, they used a four-man rotation and the uh, modern pitchers are weak and can never do that and stuff like that. I do think that there are problems with modern pitching, but I don't think that it's true that the um, problem is that, oh, they um, are unable to have, you know, everybody pitch on three or even two days rest anymore. 
I don't think so, because when you look back in history, you don't see a whole bunch of evidence of that. I mean, there were guys like, you know, Ed Walsh, we've talked about already, Joe McGinnity, you know, that type of player who could start, you know, on very short rest and could pitch well on very short rest. Um, But uh, that is not the uh, rule. That is very, very much the exception. Something to keep in mind when you talk about it. And above all, of course, remember that when you're talking about this player started here and this player started there, these guys are actually players, right? Like, they're actually people. They're not numbers. They're not stats. They're not just a name. A lot of the things I see in baseball discussions about this, a lot of the weird disagreements and the strange takes would be resolved if people would remember that you're talking about human beings, you're not talking about a statistic, and you're not talking about, like you know, uh, whatever, like a concept or something like that, right? You're talking about an actual person who had to do this thing that you're arguing about. So there you have it. Um, and I will talk with you again later. Bye-bye.